Hey hockey player, in this video I'm going to be running you through a total body hockey workout to increase your all round hockey performance. This is going to work in a series of supersets. The first superset is going to be a combination of body weight forward reaching lunges with push ups. These are the two exercises that we're going to be performing. It's going to be six per side on the body weight forward reaching lunge and then we're going to drop right away into ten push ups. Are you ready? In three, two, one, let's go. Six per side on the body weight forward reaching lunge. You see, the real key with this is to not just allow yourself to fall forward. Kevin's controlling that lowering portion every single time because we can actually get some strengthening of the back by decelerating the speed at which you move towards the reach. Very important component of this exercise. Once you've completed six per side, I want you to drop right away into the push-ups. There's no rest in between these two exercises. There's only going to be rest once you've completed both. All right, 10 push-ups, full range of motion, get a full extension at the top and do your best to touch your chest at the bottom of every single rep. Once you've completed all 10, we're going into 45 seconds rest, starts now. Get yourself ready. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Right into the forward reaching lunge. This is an excellent, one of my favorite movements, all the reaching lunge variations because they're upper and lower body. You're also getting some endurance out of it as well because you're training so many muscle groups at the exact same time. This is particularly good to help improve what's known as structural balance in the lower body because it targets certain muscle groups in hockey players that don't get hit very well when you're doing something such as a practice or a game. So to ensure you stay structurally balanced and therefore injury free, you got to keep these movements in your dry land programming. Getting push-ups going, push-ups making that upper body strong, keeping you strong on your puck, being able to defend. This is key to get the chest, the anterior deltoids, and the triceps strong. 45 seconds rest. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Last round here. Make these count. Always controlling. You're really feeling the muscles contract during these reaching lunges. And when it comes to any movement, really, you don't want that elastic bounce. When you're just bouncing around with a movement, you're not going to be training the muscle. And we're not here to just do movements. We're here to train muscles. So control everything with great technique. You're going to be a way better hockey player for it. Just like out in the ice. If you don't have great technique, you're not going to get a great result. Same thing here. If you don't have great technique, you're not going to get a great result. All right, drop down, let's do 10 push-ups, finish strong, feel that burn here, full range of motion and a great mind-muscle connection with your upper body. Once you've completed all 10 reps of the push-ups, you're going to rest 45 seconds. That starts now and I'll see you in the next superset.
Our next superset is going to be a combination of body weight lateral reaching lunges with pike push ups. That's our lateral reaching lunge. Go directly lateral, still controlling the lowering portion. And a pike push up is like a push up, but you want to kind of drive your head in the ground so that you're training your shoulders rather than your chest. Are you ready to go? Let's go. Start it up. Six per side body weight lateral reaching lunge. Controlling that descending portion each and every single time. We want to make sure that we're getting those lateral muscles responsible for that stride length that we need so much out in the ice to be as explosive as possible. Loving this exercise because we're getting those skating specific muscles on the side of the leg, but we're still getting that decelerating strength in the lower back. That's more important than you think because a lot of people don't know the number one injury in the NHL is the lower back. You don't want to run into that problem. You avoid it by getting strong there. Pike push-ups now, training the triceps and shoulders very effectively. Again, it'll keep you strong on the puck, but the shoulders specifically, you're doing 10 reps, reps here. The shoulders specifically help improve your shot power. 45 seconds rest again. Let's go. Five seconds, get ready in three, two, one. We're lateral reaching lunging, let's go. Six per side, keeping it the same, making this a superset. We're going back and forth as much as possible because I do want to get you stronger. I want to get you a little bigger with this workout. But as a hockey player, it's always important to incorporate some form of cardiovascular component. So those supersets really help train our muscles and strength but since we're doing two things back to back, lower body and upper body, we're forcing blood to move around the body, which makes our heart work a little bit more and therefore trains our cardio, heart, respiratory system, which helps improve our conditioning. All right, 10 reps here. Really try and get as vertical as Kevin is here. This is perfect. Your shoulders should be burning during this, controlling it, not bouncing at all. 45 seconds rest, let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go, keep that same intensity. We're here to become better hockey players and we do that by training with better technique and more intensity than the other players that you're gonna be going up against, all right? Six per side here, same rep ranges, feeling every single rep in every single muscle, no bouncing whatsoever, controlling both the upward and descending portion of the lunges and the pike push-ups. That technique, it's, you could make the argument te technique is more important than anything else because if you don't get that right, you don't hit the muscles and energy systems that you want. And if you don't hit those muscles and energy systems that you want, you're kind of moving rather than training. So make sure you do it right every single time. Keep killing it. Pike push-ups, they're tough, but I want you to keep going. Let's go. Get all 10, make them count. Rest period and I'll see you on the last round.
Our next superset, it's gonna be our last superset before our finishing tricep. We're gonna be doing a combination of posterior reaching lunges where you're gonna reach backwards, really open up your hips, six per side, and going right into standing calf raises for 10 reps. Squeeze for one second at the top of every rep. Are you ready? Let's go. Six per side on the posterior reaching lunge. All right? This posterior reaching lunge is great because if you notice, we've done the forward reaching, we've done the lateral reaching, now we're doing the posterior reaching. So we're hitting the back from every single angle on the lower perspective, but we're hitting the lower body from every single angle as well, which means we're making this a well-balanced strengthening workout. It's gonna help improve your hockey performance. Once you've hit all six per side, we're gonna be doing 10 on the standing calf raise. Now, I sound like a broken record this workout saying don't bounce, but it's the easiest to bounce during a calf raise. Don't be that guy, all right? Make sure you're doing 10 standing calf raises just like this, slow and controlled, controlling the up, controlling the down, and squeezing the top for one second as hard as you can. You should be really feeling that burn every single rep. Get all 10 done exactly like this. If you're struggling with any balance, it's okay to have a chair or something like that. All right, once you're done all 10, 45 seconds rest, you got two more rounds here. Five, four, three, two, one. Round number two, reaching all the way behind, controlling the whole movement. A cool part about the posterior reaching lunge is if you see Kevin's footwork here, he's opening up into a major exaggerated mohawk. This is something where you're gonna help train all the muscles that I've been talking about this whole workout, but it's kind of like a bang for the buck movement as well because you're opening up your hips at the exact same time and getting low at the exact same time, which is really perfect and makes these kinds of movements just that little bit extra special for hockey specific training. All right, do your best to open up those hips. Once you're done six per side, getting into the calf raise. Control it on the way up and on the way down. A mind muscle connection means you're thinking about nothing except your calves only your muscles lifting you up, squeezing, and then only your muscles letting you down. There's no gravity, there's no bouncing, there's no nothing. You get all 10 reps exactly like this every single time. That is how you get real results from your training. Rest period starts now. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, last round here. Make it count, make it count. From a technical perspective, the biggest rule you should always have is that your last set should look the same as your first set. If I was just to watch videotape of you exercising, I should not even be able to know if it's your last set or your first set. I might be able to guess because it might be a little red and sweating a bit. From, from a technical perspective, it should be mirror identical. You wanna make sure you have that best technique, not just for the best result, but also so you never, ever, ever get injured. The people that get injured in their dry land training, it's always due to bad technique. Always, always, always. So make sure 
that you leave your ego at the door, you're here to do good technique and get the best result. All right? Posterior lunges are behind us, moving into the standing calf raise, really squeezing every single rep. Squeeze hard, like you should feel that, that burn there every single time. You know, only you know what kind of effort you put into these movements. Nobody else can judge your effort except you. You should feel that squeeze every single time. You got 45 seconds rest and then you're gonna move on to the last tricep. Okay, your last tricep, you're gonna be doing eight reps of shoulder Ys, shoulder Ts, and shoulder Ws. Now, Kevin's on the ground, but you're essentially gonna be clamping your shoulder blades together and going Y for eight reps, and then T for eight reps, and then W for eight reps, always with your thumb pointed towards the ceiling. You ready? Let's go. Eight reps of the shoulder Ys is where we're starting. You wanna keep your whole back contracted and you really want to squeeze your upper back with every single rep, kind of in the same way that you were doing with the calf raises. So shoulder Y for eight reps, squeeze, and then you're moving into the shoulder T, squeeze on every single rep. Get that one second of a hard contraction before moving on to the next rep, all right? Eight shoulder Ys, eight shoulder Ts, and then when you're done your eight shoulder Ts, you're moving into your shoulder Ws and moving eight reps there. Once you're done that, it's gonna be 45 seconds rest, just like it's been for the entire workout. Three total supersets getting done here, really training and feeling the burn in that upper back. 45 seconds rest. Three, two, one, we're back at it. You might wonder why we're hitting the upper back three times in a row with movements that kind of look like each other. But anatomically speaking, the way in which your fibers, the direction they face is the contraction at which you're gonna get the best training result from. As an easy example, your biceps would just go straight down. So then you could do a curl and get the best contraction from them. When you look at the upper back from an anatomical perspective, it has fibers that go upward diagonally, completely sideways, and then downward diagonally. So that's why we're doing the Y, the T, and the W to ensure we're not just training the upper back, but we're training the upper back in a structurally balanced way. High quality training gets high quality results. 45 seconds rest. Get yourself ready, last round of the day. Three, two, one, let's go, finish strong. All eight reps for all three exercises executed as perfectly as possible. Don't forget to breathe. Sometimes when I'm on my stomach and I'm under that contraction, I can kind of forget to breathe sometimes. So make sure that 
That nasal breathing, really try and get in your nose as much as possible. The research is quite clear now that the more nasal breathing you can do, it's actually a little bit better for your conditioning and it's better to keep the heart rate a little bit lower. I like that for hockey players, obviously for the conditioning benefit, but keeping the heart rate lower in times of stress can really help translate to times of stress out on the ice where you're supposed to be more patient with the puck. Tough to be patient with the puck when your heart rate's going crazy. So control your breathing. Even during the last set of the workout, you're going to be a better hockey player for it. All right? That is it. Total body hockey workout done. Awesome job.